happy DIYers and woodworkers Mayanna here with Heartwood Art and today we're going to talk about building this wonderful workbench. This is a two-part series and this is part one and today we're going to cover how to attach these rails to these notch 4x4 posts that are so easy to do on a miter saw and we're going to talk about mounting the block for our casters. Hey, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Come on over to heartwoodart.com and see all the build plans. Be sure to see the link above or below this video wherever you happen to be watching it. Okay, let's dive in. Before you start building, let's talk about leg choices. You know, I tried to double 2x4s for the legs on my miter saw station, but I wish I had tried notching 4x4 posts for lap joints instead, like I did for this workbench. They are so much easier and faster to make. So whatever you're going to do, make four of these 4x4 four four notch posts. And you can see my post for how I quickly and easily notch these on a miter saw station. Now let's talk about your caster mounts. You know, it's not a good idea to screw directly up into the end grain to mount casters. So if you plan to make your workbench mobile, see why I use pocket screws to attach a square piece of plywood to the bottom of each 4x4 post. And now would be the time to make those pocket holes. You'll actually mount the plywood squares and casters later, and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, let's get to the frame supports, because this is the easiest part of the whole build. You're going to make two of these. And to ensure all four aprons were exactly the same length, I used a stop block on my miter saw station. That way, I could measure once and cut many. Now, before you go any further, you might want to think ahead at this juncture and decide how you want to attach the top of your workbench. You can use cleats, which are the most desirable, pocket hole screws, which are easier for DIYers, or brad nails and screws from the top, which is the least desirable way. You'll want to prepare your rails now if you plan to use pocket holes or cleats. Now, the preferred method is cleats, but that does require more advanced woodworking to do. Pocket hole screws are easy and make the top easy to change later. Brad nails are the easiest of all, but they make it hard to replace the top later. And you can see my post for the best workbench top and attaching it for more details. I used pocket hole screws for the top and brad nails for the lower shelf. And I didn't decide to do that until after I had the whole frame built. This is how I had to drill my pocket holes. And that's no fun. It would have been way easier if I'd done them right after I cut the rails. Okay, let's assemble the frame supports. Lay out all of your pieces and then assemble. <laughs> Use a speed square everywhere to check that it is indeed square before you screw together. Now I used construction screws for this and you definitely want to pre-drill them first, but I didn't need to countersink them. My Ryobi impact driver made super duper quick and easy work of getting those long screws in and even recessed. And you can see my post on how to determine the right drill bit size for your screw. Now let's talk about glue or don't glue. You can use wood glue on these joints to make them even stronger, but I chose not to do that because I was concerned the glue would start to set up before I could get all the joints glued and recheck square everywhere. Okay, when you're finished, here's how the finished frame support should look. And here's how both of them will be turned when you finish, with the aprons facing out. Now, if you choose to include casters, now is a great time to attach the plywood squares. The floor and a Craig right angle clamp make it super easy to keep everything square while you're attaching those pocket hole screws to one side and then the other. See how I chose the right caster for this bench and more about how to mount casters in this post. Alrighty, that's part one. In the next part, we'll add the stretchers to make the workbench the desired width and finish assembling the frame. I sure hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on building this workbench. Be sure to look for a link above or below this video wherever you happen to be watching it for the other part of it. And come on over to hardwoodart.com for the full build plans and I'll see you in the shop.